Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights. Thanks, sponsors, Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication, CompC.com, Burbank Sports Cards, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Heritage Auctions, Hugs and Scott Auctions, Upper Deck, Panini, and Tops. This is another little snippet from my session with John Newman that we scheduled, and I always look forward to that. More about CompC, finishing that up. And then we talked about the Cleveland National, which he's very excited about going to. Partly, I think, because he can drive. And I think a lot of East Coasters are like that. So that's a positive. And I will be there. I just wanted to answer his questions because I've been to all the Nationals, and that means all the Cleveland Nationals and a bunch of other shows in the Cleveland area, too, so over the years. That's one time where experience matters. Thanks, John. Thanks, everybody. And here it is. Yeah. When it comes to listing your cards and selling, how much time would you say you spend on the selling aspect of the hobby per week? Very little time. Basically eBay, I have my lots already prepared. And so when somebody makes an offer or or buys at full price, I'll either accept the offer or or a counter or whatever. And so then all I got to do is put them in the bag, put a label on it and uh, take them to the post office. With ComC, it's even simpler. I'm just saying yes or no to offers. The ones that pay full price, I don't have to do anything. As far as pricing my cards, I'm super fast at that. And it's partly because you have to have done a bunch of price guide books. So I already have a pretty ballpark idea anyway. And so it doesn't take me very long. And that's why I can go to the dollar box because for the average person who's not as up on what's going to sell on ComC and what things are worth even, it's a better deal for them to sell it in the dollar box. They get their dollar, they're done. They could have gotten five bucks on some of them in five years. But I'm not pulling out the one card that's the great card. I'm pulling out 100 cards. If it was just one card, I'd feel bad about that. I'm cherry picking their whole dollar box and I found the one card. But that wouldn't even be fun for me. Okay. Are you a dog lover? I am. I'm okay. an Australian kid. Okay. Okay. Let's say you had a dog and for whatever reason, your wife or family, somebody was allergic or something, and you had to transact your dog, and it'd be really painful. And so somebody- I might ca- transact my wife. Though. Okay, I'm just saying, but if somebody came up to you and said, I've seen your dog, he looks great, I've seen how you act with him, my son is looking for a dog, could I buy your dog and give him a good home? And you might even say, you don't even give me any money, I, we're just really trying to find a good home for the dog, Okay. Okay, now contrast that with somebody comes up and says, I don't like dogs, but I'll give you a hundred bucks for your dog. And you say, what are you going to do with it? I'm going to find him a good home somewhere. That's a flipper. A dog flipper is no good. I wouldn't want a dog flipper. I don't want a card flipper. I I want to find a home for my cards. It's not like my cards are my children or a pet or anything, but I want him to find a good home and not cards that somebody just, that I say flips. They're going to auction your dog off to the highest bidder. That just just doesn't sound right to me. I agree with you. I tend to like someone that loves the hobby, passionate, is in it for the right reason. Loves the hobby, would do it even if it wasn't a money aspect. But sounds like more of your time is spent shipping than the listing or prep. More more time on eBay is spent prepping the lots. But they already were in good order, pre-boxed. And I just take my photos and then I'm ready to go. I answer the questions and I ship it. But I'm shipping hundreds of cards at a time. So that's worth it. I would not have the patience to ship one card at a time, but that's what I have ComC for. Okay, another hypothetical about ComC because I want to say stuff I haven't said before. So let's say that I've got a card that I bought in the dollar box or maybe I bought it in a quarter box, but I put it on ComC for $250. So I've got maybe 75 cents in it at that point, or maybe a buck 50. So anyway, I've got 250 in it because that's what I think it's worth. But I did that a number of years ago. So it's sitting there at 250. And all of a sudden, a guy comes along and puts a card up there for 10 bucks. Same card. Okay, so I'm sitting there at 250. He's at $10. And I think, gosh, that really might be worth 10 bucks. I priced it five years ago. But I don't notice that until that guy makes me an offer on my card. And I can see he's the same guy that has the $10 card making me a buck and a quarter offer on the 250 card. So what would you do? The card probably now is worth 10 bucks. He should have bought yours for 250 and lowered the two cards to seven bucks. 
they don't do that, but they could, but they don't. It's similar to the story before where you just buy it rather than... But it's the same guy buying it, trying to get an even better deal, even though he stands to gain doubly from price protecting. It's not shield bidding, but it's protecting your own price. If it's me and I'm the $10 guy, and I feel that strong about the card and the and the ten dollar position. I'm buying yours for two fifty exactly. without haggling. Exactly. And now I have a choice. I can, I can add that yeah. to it and keep it at ten, or I can say, listen, I just got this one for two fifty. I'm going to lower both to to seven dollars each and be more. I have to sell it quicker and still come out. That's my take mm-hmm. on. It. I've probably done that in person. One last question I have for you when it comes to the selling aspect. I buy a car from Dr. James Beckett. You ship it. When I get it, will I know who it came from? Is there any indicator? I hope not. I just like to be anonymous. I already get enough mail and emails and other kind of stuff. I want my inventory to stand on its own merit. Because some people might pay extra. I don't want it to pay extra. If they want it, it's, it's a good deal. And if it's overpriced, every once in a while I go back through. And 99% of the time, it's lowering the price. It, I hadn't sold for a few years. And I think, you know what? I thought it was worth that, but nobody else thinks that. And even though I've got a lot of price guides I've written, they're mostly last century, John. So I know what's scarce. Demand is fickle. So I'm going to lower the prices and I'm going to gradually do it. That's not exhausting, but it's frustrating. If you were a show dealer and every month, if prices went down or every time you priced your inventory, you're mainly marking things down further. That's depressing. And so that's what I'm doing with Comp C. On the other hand, if it isn't selling, you got to do something. Otherwise, you're just going to sit there with a museum that you're not charging admission. You're paying to have yeah. those cards there. So, yeah, so yeah. I'm lower my prices, and that's a little bit bittersweet. And yet, like you said, I'm going to know that if almost everything I paid a dollar or less for, and so if I lower it to $2, I'm probably still making money. But it's just sitting there. My goal is to get it in the hands of somebody that wants it. I agree. In one of my rules, my DBA, as far as selling cards, is JN Enterprises. There's no sports cards attached to it. I don't like having sports cards anywhere on the outside of that package, denoting what might be in that. So what I do is inside, the the, I have business cards. So I have a a show business card. I have one for Hobby News Daily, one for Hobby Hotline. So I have three business cards. So they, they may realize it after a purchase or after they receive it, like, oh, this is from John Newman. I've had, it's funny because I've had eBay feedback where people give it a positive feedback and said, hey, I love awesome shipping, great packaging. I don't even like putting photo, do not bend or or anything like that. I just well protected with cardboard and I'm more apt to send it in a bubble mailer with padding anyway. we're, We're headed towards the next national, which this year will be in Cleveland, Ohio. I've never been to Cleveland, period, let alone to a national there. For me, it's a five-hour and 10-minute drive. Unlike Chicago, I will be driving to Cleveland. I had to fly to Chicago. I'm going to go in a day earlier and check out the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's something on my bucket list. You've been to every national. The convention center had some issues and then had to close. It's now uh, operational. For those like me, Dr. Jim, who've never been to a Cleveland National, what would you say? How is it different? And it's under new leadership as well. Cleveland's old school town, original baseball town, lots of great collectors there. So there was always a great knowledgeable collecting base. I did a lot of the shows in Ohio and Cleveland back in the 70s when I was at Bowling Green. The Cleveland guys were great. There were always good shows there. The IX Center is like a bunker. It's not a hotel ballroom, like an airport hangar or something. It's just huge ceilings with lots of light. It's not near anything. You've got a couple dozen probably medium-sized hotels and motels that are decent within a couple miles. So it's all there near the airport. And so you won't have any trouble getting lodging, I don't think. It's just that none of them are closer than a mile. And maybe that's because it's like a bomb shelter. You're not going to be close to that. But there's shuttles that run. You can rent a car. If you're driving, you're going to be in good shape. There's ample parking there. It's well done, John. You're going to have a great time. The drivability is an important part of why uh, Cleveland was chosen for the East Coast people to be able to drive. But the, the room is laid out very rectangularly. 
that's a positive. So you'll be able to find where you want to go. It's not plush. The restaurants are terrific in Cleveland. A lot of ethnic, great restaurants, but they're going to be a little bit of a drive. There's no huge main hotel. So the trade nights are probably going to need to be in the room. There may be some little things going on at some of these hotels, but most of the hotels are medium size. They're not gigantic host hotels for a huge show. I, I've heard people say if you're flying in, you want to book your lodging as early as you can to be as close. Yeah. And I think you said yeah, But it's that one mile response. as opposed to two miles. Basically, some of them, there's some hotel shuttles as well as the National may have some shuttles that have a route for some of the smaller, farther out hotels. But I don't think you'd want to get a cab or an Uber. You're really only talking about a few miles, but you really wouldn't walk. And there are dealers or people that have uh, vans that give rides. They leave on the hour or on the half hour at these things. If you're down at breakfast at one of the hotels, there's a whole, it's cool. There's a lot of hobby people and, and you could get a ride or you'd give somebody a ride. So it works out. It's not as big a problem as you would think because each hotel's taken over by collectors. How cool is that? Going to the new leadership group, do you expect much difference or you think it's just going to be a different city? Do you well, think they'll come in? and make some changes right away or think they'll I'm a, take your time? I'm a big fan of the new guys, but I was a huge fan of John Brogy and Mike Burkus was a close friend. That ran its course. The committee had the chance to make a change and they did. And what's done is done. Having said that, I think the show will not be as good as last year because Cleveland is not as good as Chicago. But what Joe and his team will do, it'll be better than the previous Cleveland because Cleveland needs to be compared to Cleveland. I think they're going to do a great job. They're going to add some wrinkles. I don't know all the things they would do, but I think it's going to be bigger and better than the last Cleveland show. But it would take a lot to surpass the Chicago show. The John Brogy and his team really went out with a bang. They really hit a home run. So it's going to be great. I hope everybody comes because the building can hold it. There will be less dealers because there's less square footage than they had in Chicago. It'll be configured better, but there'll be less dealers, less tables, less booths. That being said, do you, do you think it'll be tighter in there be, with less space and more people potentially or similar type crowd? La I, I, I know last year was a record center, they said. I never felt cramped as much as I did with the previous Chicago show yeah. with the added yeah. square footage. No, it, How do you feel like that you, will you, be? You didn't go to the places I went then. It, it, it was very cramped at times in some of the areas of Chicago last year because if it was a popular table, some of the aisles were narrower than others in the newer spaces that they broke out. I think Cleveland is going to be more rectangular and regular, and it's never been a problem. Uh, it'd be a great problem to have if it's crowded, but I think they're going to configure it in a way that it's going to be busy. There's just not as much population within 100 miles of Cleveland as there is Chicago, I think. In Chicago, you're really pulling from a big, even better collecting area with two teams, not just one. You're right about one thing. If you need a ride, Dr. Jim, I will have my okay. vehicle with me. Be sure to get a hold of me. Okay. We'll make sure you get to where you got to be. Like you said, you know me very well. No friend left behind. So you are a mensch for sure. I appreciate it. As always, we, we look forward to another national and, and keeping your streak. Good. I've started my streak, but I don't think I'll ever catch up to you. Just enjoy each year. Like I said, I don't even know how Joe Drellick is going to make it better, but that's a goal they have to make it better, not just do the same thing. So I think they're going to innovate. And if they innovate in three things and two of them work, let's say thank you for the two things that did work instead of dwelling on the third thing that was a nice try. The man in the